My dear people, the Okay, that was uh, Morocco's King Mohammed VI there announcing major changes to uh, the country's constitution. Uh, introducing legislation that aims to make the government more accountable. Morocco then set to become a constitutional monarchy uh, in which the king will lose some powers but will retain others. As king, he said, he's a trustworthy guide and the supreme arbitrator. Uh, a new contract between the monarchy and the people, he described this new constitution as. Uh, it enshrines a citizenship-based monarchy and him as the citizen king. He granted the government certain executive powers, but um, the king himself will keep exclusive control over, uh, amongst other things, the security apparatus, the military, certain religious appointments. Uh, he will choose a prime minister from whichever party wins uh, elections, and then he retains the right to approve uh, the prime minister's choice for ministers, ambassadors, and regional governments. In a moment, we'll be live in Amman in Jordan for some reaction. But first, let's uh, speak uh, with uh, Nabila Ramdani, who's uh, an expert on North African affairs, who's been listening to uh, the King's speech. Uh, to What did you make of, of what you heard? Well, I think one has to put the King's speech in the context of the Arab Spring, uh, of course. And um, in effect, in his speech, the King uh, admitted uh, that the uh, malaise uh, in Moroccan society is underpinned by two fundamental grievances, which are uh, the uh, bleak uh, socio-economic uh, conditions and perspectives, especially for young Moroccans, and also, and, and more crucially, the, la the lack of uh, fundamental uh, human rights as well. So it's a clear attempt to uh, diffuse uh, popular anger in Morocco in order to avoid um, uh, the expression of that anger, which saw in neighboring countries uh, regimes uh, being overthrown, uh, especially in Tunisia uh, and, and Egypt, which are uh, very close uh, to Morocco indeed. So there's a clear attempt here to diffuse popular anger and to try to um, introduce some uh, reforms within the country. Uh, the king highlighted the main uh, problems within Moroccan society, which suffers massively. Uh, there's in fact a gap between the positive image of social development and advancement of Morocco uh, worldwide and the reality which is uh, in effect um, huge problems of illiteracy, unemployment, uh, corruption and uh, lack of uh, basic uh, freedoms, uh, including freedom of expression. Now, the king highlighted the fact that he intends to reform all that and equip young people with the economic uh, know-how to uh, be able to... Uh, uh, to, to, uh, to deal with it, to be part of a globalized uh, economy. He also promised uh, reforms on, uh, uh, as far as human rights are concerned, uh, they uh, stop arresting people, basically, uh, for criticizing the regime. And he also uh, talked about a social monarchy as opposed to the current absolute monarchy, uh, which means a fairer society where uh, people would be looked after uh, and, but, if, and, in effect, okay, okay. Uh, an attempt to right. uh, uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, bridge the gap between the rich and yeah. the poor. But is that going to be enough? You, you, you correctly point out that Morocco at the moment has uh, uh, a de facto absolute monarchy. Protesters, people, uh, activists, people who'd been uh, uh, agitating for some sort of social change wanted uh, a move to a parliamentary monarchy and what they've got is a constitutional monarchy. Is it going to be enough? Uh, no, I don't believe so. And also, I think the Moroccans will be very keen to see if the king's words do translate into, uh, um, into a practical reality. Uh, uh, Morocco had parliamentary elections I in September. And uh, in effect, what the king promised is that every party could be represented. But uh, as it happens, uh, the most popular party, which is the Islamic Party of Charity and Justice, Justice and Charity in, in Morocco, was banned and its political leader put under house arrest. So that's not exactly a reflection of a completely democratic society. And effectively, it's uh, still um, determining you know, who's allowed to stand for elections and determining the, uh, the uh, future of uh, the country as to who should be represented in, in parliament. So I think people are very careful in Morocco as to uh, what the king is promising now and what he's going to deliver exactly. Okay, Nabila, for the moment, thanks, thanks very much.